confirmed. The Galaxy S26 Pro will include the Exynos 2600. We have seen proof that the S26 Pro will have the Exynos 2600 processor. In February 2026, Samsung is slated to release the S26 series, which will be their next line of flagship smartphones that don't fold. There have been a lot of leaks about the S26 Pro, S26 Edge, and S26 Ultra so far. A lot of these rumors say that majority of the phones will have the Exynos 2600 chipset, although other markets will get a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor instead. Here is a proof that the S26 Pro, the smallest and cheapest device in the series, indeed employ the Exynos 2600. This is probably true for most places in the world, but Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, which was introduced last month, may power the phone in the US and China. According to reports, Samsung started working on the Galaxy S26 Plus recently as a last-minute change of plans. It will probably have the same chip distribution as the S26 Pro. Features of the Exynos 2600 that got out. According to earlier leaks, the Exynos 2600 will be produced on Samsung Foundry's 2 nanometer fabrication process. It will have a 10-core CPU configuration, including ARMC1 series CPU cores. For graphics, it will employ the Xclips 950 GPU, which uses AMD Arduino architecture. With that, it performs faster than the Snapdragon 8 Elite and Apple's i19 Pro in the iPhone 17 series. However, it remains to be seen whether it is as potent as the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and the MediaTek Dimensity 9500. Reportedly, Samsung started mass-producing Exynos 2600 in September. The upgraded Hexagon engine provides more than just increased on-device performance for AI features. Qualcomm says a priority of its new chips includes agentic AI capability. That means the Qualcomm Silicon will be able to enable user-driven actions across apps. From Qualcomm's initial description, it sounds like the cross-app activities that proved to be a highlight of Samsung S25 released earlier this year should become more prominent across top Android handsets this fall. That means you'll be able to ask your on-device assistant to do actions that span across numerous apps in just one command. The way Qualcomm sees it, Agentic AI will be able to tap into on-device learning to gain a better sense of who's using the phone. The final effect should be more proactive recommendations from your on-device assistant with that data staying on your device for increased privacy. Ultimately, Katusian says, the aim is for AI to work across devices. An example offered at the Snapdragon Summit presentation announcing the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 depicted a person wearing smart glasses and carrying their phone around a concert. In this case, the person would employ their smart glasses to capture something at the concert, with the footage being sensed onto their phone. But probably the largest advance for the new Snapdragon's video capture capabilities is its ability to record in the advanced professional video code a first for a mobile platform according to Qualcomm. That means the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 powered phones would be able to capture near lossless video quality, which would make those phones tempting tools for pro-level video creation. Apple has made a lot of hay in recent years about the video capture capabilities of its iPhones, with the iPhone 17 Pro models recently adding support for video standards such as ProRes RAW that appeal to content creators. APV support on the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 implies that Qualcomm's not ready to relinquish that position to its competition. Samsung doesn't need an Orange Galaxy S26 Ultra to prove anything. The S26 Ultra recently debuted in a bright orange dummy render, prompting comments throughout social media. Many accused Samsung of mimicking Apple, which introduced a cosmic orange hue with the iPhone 17 Pro Max. While the render seems to be false, Samsung likely can't escape criticism if it delivers the S26 Ultra in a similar orange shade. It better not do that. It'll seem like a copycat. When you look back at Samsung's color history for Galaxy flagships, you see that orange or tints close to it have been part of its palette before. And you don't have to go back many years. Last year's Galaxy S24 Ultra came in a titanium orange edition. Samsung has also introduced similar tones to various inexpensive and mid-range handsets in recent years. Quite clearly, Apple didn't invent the color orange for cell phones. 
However, if the Korean company launches the Galaxy S26 Ultra in orange, it will almost surely face criticism and accusations of mimicking Apple. Public opinion will recall Apple first, since the iPhone 17 Pro Max is new and is extremely visible, so its cosmic orange hue seems fresh. If a competition offers a comparable shade in the future months, it naturally feels derivative. Samsung is no exception. To be honest, Samsung doesn't need an orange S26 Ultra to stand out. The business has traditionally given greater color diversity than most rivals, from vibrant reds and blues to refined titanium and mint finishes. That strength resides in its openness to experiment without following trends too closely. To avoid unneeded controversy and allegations of plagiarism, Samsung could be better off ignoring orange altogether for its 2026 lineup. Back in 2020, Samsung introduced the Galaxy S20 Ultra with a large 5000 mAh battery. Fast forward to 2025, and that figure hasn't changed. Even the future S26 Ultra is expected to stick with the same capacity. While the business has refined efficiency and software to extend battery life, competing brands have made even greater improvements. It's becoming evident that Samsung needs more than simply efficiency to stay competitive. Despite a much larger cell, the S20 Ultra couldn't outlast its rival iPhone 11 Pro Max with a 3,969 mAh unit. It underscores one of Apple's enduring advantages, tight integration of hardware and software. Because Apple develops both the hardware and the operating system, it wrings more performance per watt out of its batteries. In contrast, Android manufacturers must adapt various hardware variables and OS layers which often reduces overhead. Over the years, Samsung has managed to close the gap, even as Apple has improved the battery capacity of top-tier iPhones. Samsung managed it while keeping the same 5000 mAh cell, which is astounding. However, in actual durability tests, Galaxy flagships still routinely fall short of competing iPhones. Now, with its new release, Apple has pushed capacity over the 5000 mAh barrier. The iPhone 17 Pro Max comes with a 5,088 mAh battery according to teardowns and regulatory declarations. Unsurprisingly, it destroys the S25 Ultra in battery tests. Apple not only met Samsung's battery standard but outdid it, and continues to lead in runtime thanks to higher efficiency. This is a double blow to the Korean powerhouse. Because Apple no longer behind Samsung on battery capacity, Samsung's old justification we have the bigger battery, is losing weight. If Apple halts further battery upgrades and the iPhone maker continues improving efficiency, the Galaxy Ultra series risks slipping far behind. Leaks and rumors say the S26 Ultra will again employ a 5000 mAh battery. At this point in development, it may be too late to modify it. If true, the only hope for Samsung to recoup ground may rest in advancements in efficiency, battery chemistry, or charging innovation. Many experts feel a major storage upgrade might only come with the S27 Ultra. Until then, Samsung supporters may have to live with Apple users gloating about battery life and wonder when Samsung will eventually take the lead again. The Galaxy S26 Ultra's 5X camera could finally get a long-delayed upgrade. A larger aperture delivers many of benefits for the S26 Ultra's 5X camera. The S26 Ultra leaks continue to come in, and we recently saw camera specs surface online. Now, a reliable leaker has provided even more facts about the Ultraphone's camera technology. Tipster Ice Universe has stated on Twitter that the S26 Ultra's 50 megapixel 5X camera would have an S/2.9 aperture. That's substantially wider than the S25 Ultra's S slash 3.4 shooter. So what does that mean for users then? Well, a bigger aperture enables higher light intake and more light yields a brighter photo with fewer noise. A larger aperture is particularly advantageous at night or indoors, allowing for brighter, cleaner photos in these settings. Another benefit of a wider aperture is that the camera's shutter doesn't have to stay open as long, resulting in photographs with decreased blur. Finally, a wider aperture delivers a shallow depth of field, which should permit portrait photographs with more realistic bokeh effects.
That means the camera app doesn't have to primarily focus on software-based depth effects, which might look unfinished. We're consequently expecting the S26 Ultra's 5X camera to take higher quality low-light photographs with less blur, as well as improved portrait mode images. For what it's worth, we thought the S25 Ultra was disappointing in our camera zoom shootout earlier this year. So we expect the S26 Ultra puts up a serious fight against next-generation competition. This leak also comes as several companies offer telescopic cameras with wider perches. The Volvo X200 Pro has a 200 megapixel f/2.7 periscope camera. 3.7x, the Xiaomi 15 Ultra delivers a 200 megapixel with f/2.6 periscope shooter. 4.3x, and the Pixel 10 Pro includes a 48 megapixel f/2.8 periscope lens. 5x. In reality, the Huawei P60 Pro was a Pathfinder back in 2023, providing a 3.5x periscope camera with an f/2.1 aperture. So this upgrade is clearly overdue for Samsung. So that's all we know for now. We'll be sure to keep you updated as soon as we have more information. Thanks for watching.